So, uh, hello everyone in the room. Uh, my name is Sachin, and I'm a technical marketing engineer here at Big Switch. Uh, so, yeah, since we have just a little bit of time, so originally what I was planning to do is to show you how uh, Big Switch really helps you deploy your BCF, uh, uh, the VxRail cluster, uh, and also like how it automatically provisions your network for your VxRail workloads, and uh, also providing visibility. Uh, we will have this demo on YouTube as well, and then I will provide you with the copy so you can edit it and put it on. But I quickly just wanted to show some of the points that Don highlighted about the ease of uh, automation and also the visibility that we are providing, right? So I'll just skip to that part quickly. So just to show you quickly the topology right now, so what we have here is we have a three rack uh, big switch uh, setup, right? And it's controlled by our big switch controller. And we are having uh, three VxRail nodes that are connected to each of these racks. And we are provisioning some VM workloads on top of it. Right? So traditionally, if you think, uh, uh, as Don was mentioning, you would have to uh, spin up, create the port groups on your vCenter, put the workloads on those uh, port groups. And then in your network, you need to create uh, trunks for those VLANs, define the VLANs, create the trunks for the VLANs and also put them on the interfaces on each of the hosts where they're connecting, right? So we'll see how Big Switch will automate all that for you so that you know, network engineers can focus on more critical tasks like optimizing your network or securing your network rather than you know, doing the repeated task. So we'll skip through these slides. Okay, so I have a cluster here which is vSAN enabled and we have three VxRail nodes on it. Right? And we have the VM1 and VM2 spun up on different VxL nodes. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just opening up, pinging from VM2 to VM1, and the ping fails. This is because no network has been provisioned yet. Right? I've just connected the VxL nodes. Now what I do is basically I go to the big switch GUI, right? and I add the integration for vCenter. What I'm doing, I'm specifying the vCenter IP login and enabling my automation. So after I do this, what Big Switch does is programmatically integrates with vCenter, reads all the port group information and where the VMs are connected to, and I'll automatically program those networks on my fabric. So as you can see here, uh, I've created the segment corresponding to the port group where the VMs are connected. I've automatically provisioned those VLANs on the interface groups where uh, those VMs are connected to, right? And now I can see those two VMs have been discovered in that segment. So after I do this, the ping starts working. So And the user did not have to configure anything on the network. All they had to do was just point it to the vCenter, and everything was taken care of. And Don mentioned again about the vMotion stuff, right? So how, how do we do that? So right now I spun up an, uh, another VM, VM3, which is sitting on VxRail node 2, right? And in port group VLAN 100. So as you can see, I have automatically created a segment for that uh, port group. I have my VLAN 100, being, uh, which is being trunked on the interface uh, to the host where that VM is sitting right now. What I'm going to do now is going to do a vMotion to another node. So we'll show here we are doing a vMotion to the VxL node 3. Here we can see the vMotion is complete. I have the VM3 sitting on VxL node 3 and v, uh, VLAN 100. And now, if I go to the same segment again on Big Switch, I can see that VLAN 100 is now being provisioned on the trunk connecting to the Node 3. And now, since it's no longer required on my trunk connecting to Node 2, I have pruned that VLAN from there. So this also follows your security best practice, where you don't want to leave VLANs hanging on trunks where it's not required, right? And then finally, uh, quickly a uh, shout out at uh, the visibility functionality. So. This is something we saw in the screenshot that Don presented, right? So quick summary on number of host virtual switches and the endpoints that we have on our uh, virtual network. And then we can see here quickly, uh, just by knowing the name of the VM, you can figure out what port group it's connected to, what are the distributed switch uplinks, and where are they actually connecting to the physical network. Now what this enables is a better collaboration between your VM and the network team, right? Now the network guy does not have to ask the VM uh, admin basic questions. He knows everything from here and they can just focus on more troubleshooting. 
and some of the other visibility into the software and the hardware versions of the VXL nodes, which you get right from the big switch GUI. If you have the name of the VM, you know the state it's powered on, powered off, uh, where it's residing, which host it's residing, how it's connected to, and the IP and the MAC information, right? And the last thing I want to just quickly highlight here is the analytics, right? So we did a vMotion earlier, so we can see quickly from here that we, from the big switch GUI, we can see the number of vMotion events that have happened, the VMs that are involved in the vMotion, and also the vCenter where they belong to. So as John was mentioning, he gets a call, and he can quickly see here that what time the vMotion started and what time it ended, right from the big switch GUI. And finally, to make the troubleshooting easy, uh, so we provide a feature called uh, as a fabric trace here. So this is a sample result I'm showing, right? So what I'm trying to do here is trace a packet between VM2 and VM1. So if you see in a traditional network, I would have to log into each of the switch, figure out the MAC address table, correlate them with multiple switches, and then I would know the exact path of the packet, right? Here, with just one click, what I do is basically provide the source IP, destination IP, and do click trace. And once that is done, I can see exactly what switches the packet pass through, what are the ingress and the egress interface on each switch, right? So if the trace failing at a certain point, I would exactly know where it is failing, and I can go troubleshoot those switches, right? So uh, provides really good visibility and ease of troubleshooting even the virtual workloads right from the big switch uh, uh, GUI environment. Sorry for going fast, but I know I, had, I just had like a couple of minutes to present. So uh, this is the end of the demo, and thanks, guys, again for I having get one us. question in? Yeah. All right. Uh, I have customers who want to do a zero-trust networking model. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I implement that? Do I need NSX? Can I just use you guys? What, what would happen? So uh, we definitely work very well with NSX, right? So we can be the ideal underlay uh, with NSX overlay. And then if you're doing micro-segmentation and things from the NSX, that still works. We will provide the plumbing required for you to like have your VTAPs connected and all that kind of stuff, right? Okay. And then we also provide uh, security at our uh, logical router level, and we can discuss more of it offline as well, like how it exactly works. But uh, we can c uh, control like you know uh, what tenant or what VPC can talk to what VPC, what segments can talk to what segments within the VPC and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I could have things that aren't under NSX control still be. Uh, protected. Yes. Hello. In this demo, we will see how the Big Cloud Fabric integrates with the VxRail cluster by creating an enterprise VPC or eVPC in the fabric that greatly simplifies network provisioning via fabric automation and provides real time visibility to the network admins into the virtualized workloads. Big Cloud Fabric is powered by an STN controller to build a leaf spine fabric using open networking switches. Unlike box by box networks, Big Cloud Fabric provides a single pane of glass and integrates with various VMware STDC products and operates the entire fabric as a single logical switch. Big Cloud Fabric leverages the cloud networking principles which use the construct of virtual private cloud like AWS VPC for logical isolation across multiple tenants. Similarly, Big Cloud Fabric Controller uses Enterprise VPCs or eVPCs in the fabric for each of your VMware deployments, allowing logical isolation and multi-tenancy. If communication is desired between the eVPCs, then eVPC peering can be established. Big Cloud Fabric provides an infrastructure eVPC for VxRail that greatly simplifies VxRail cluster bootstrapping and expansion. By auto-detecting the VxRail nodes, Big Cloud Fabric provides the flexibility of connecting VxRail nodes anywhere in the fabric. As port groups are created and VMs are provisioned in vCenter, fabric automation auto-provisions the logical networks on the Big Cloud Fabric, thus simplifying network provisioning. Network policy migration automatically provisions or prunes VLANs from the Big Cloud Fabric interfaces as UV motion VMs to different hosts. Big Cloud Fabric also provides real-time visibility and analytics for the VxRail hosts and workload VMs along with end-to-end -end troubleshooting capabilities using the Big Cloud Fabric test path. For the demo topology, we have three rack Big Cloud Fabric setup, controlled by the Big Cloud Fabric controller. We have VxRail nodes attached to each rack and have workload VMs running on VxRail nodes that we will use in this demo. First, 
Let's see how the VxRail infrastructure eVPC helps with the cluster formation. The VxRail nodes are auto-detected and placed in the management segment of the VxRail infrastructure eVPC, allowing the nodes to be auto-discovered during VxRail initialization. Management segment also acts as a logical network for communication between the VxRail manager, VxRail nodes, and the vCenter. vSAN segment provides the logical network to establish communication between the vSAN interfaces, which is required for successful validation for building the VxRail cluster. Similarly, vMotion segment provides the logical network to establish communication between the vMotion interfaces. Here we can see that the management, vSAN and vMotion segments have been created in the VxRail infrastructure eVPC. We connect to the VxRail manager initial IP address to begin deployment. VxRail manager is able to discover the nodes as BCF auto-discovered the VxRail nodes and placed them in the management segment. After filling out the required details, we begin the validation. Since BCF auto-discovered the vSAN and the vMotion interfaces, vSAN and vMotion connectivity is successfully verified. As we can see here, the cluster is now successfully deployed. We log into the VxRail manager and verify the health of the cluster. In vCenter, we can see that the VxRail nodes have been added to the vSAN-enabled cluster. Next, we will see how the network provisioning is simplified for the VxRail workload VMs. We have created VM1 and VM2 as our workload VMs sitting on different VxRail nodes. Ping from VM2 to VM1 fails as the network is not provisioned yet. We will enable the vCenter integration so that we can create the VxRail workload eVPC. Once the integration is enabled, we can see that the segments for the workload VM is auto-created. VLAN 50, which is being used by the workload VMs, is automatically trunked on the interfaces connecting to the relevant VxRail nodes, and the VMs are auto-discovered in that segment. As we can see, the previously failing pings are now working. Next, we will see how the network policy migration works when performing vMotion. VM3 is currently residing on VxRail node 2 in port group VLAN 100. We will move it to VxRail node 3 and see how BCF migrates the network policy. Since VM3 is currently on VxRail node 2, we can see that VLAN 100 is trunked on the interface connecting to VxRail node 2. We now initiate the vMotion. Once vMotion is completed, VM3 is now residing on VxRail node 3. We can now see that VLAN 100 is being trunked on the interface connecting to VxRail node 3. Since VLAN 100 is no longer required on interface connecting to VxRail node 2, it is automatically pruned from that interface. Next, we will see how the BigCloud fabric provides real-time host and VM level visibility and analytics along with end-to-end -end troubleshooting capabilities using VCF test path. VCF provides quick summary of number of VxRail hosts, virtual switches, endpoints, and port groups defined in the vCenter. Scrolling down, we get an easy-to-interpret graphical representation of vSphere networking showing the virtual switches on each host port groups on the virtual switch with the attached VMs, virtual switch uplinks and interface on the big cloud fabric where the virtual switch uplinks are connected to. We can also see the details about the VxRail nodes like the hardware and the software version and also the CPU and the memory stats. Endpoint table shows useful information about the auto-discovered VMs like the name of the VM, power state, port group attachment, host where the VM resides, VM NIC connections, as well as the IP and the MAC information. Next, we look at the Fabric Analytics page. In order to make it easy for the network admin to troubleshoot virtualized workloads, BigCloud Fabric collects events from vCenter and displays them on pre-configured dashboards. As an example, let's click on the vMotion tab. Here we can see the number of vMotion events over time, VMs involved in the vMotion, and the vCenter managing those VMs. Looking at the events below, we can see the start and the end event for the vMotion along with the timestamp. Fabric Trace allows the admin to trace the end-to-end -end path of a packet with single click and no box-by-box -box hopping. A sample result of the Fabric Trace is shown here. It shows the path taken by VM2 to reach VM1 through the Big Cloud Fabric. Let's see how we got this information. Using Test Path, we select the Source IP, Destination IP and run the Fabric Trace. 
The result shows all the switches the packet traversed along with the ingress and the egress interfaces for each hop. If the trace is incomplete, you can see how far the packet traversed along and pinpoint the offending switch. Additional details about each hop are also presented on the left. This brings us to the end of the demo. Thanks for watching.